Why, hello there everyone. I'm Laxo, aka the Kumo Sensei. Minasan, ohayo gozaimasu. And today we're going to be discussing about one of the most oversaturated tarantulas in the market and in the tarantula hobby, the Teletokoto Awapilosis Nicaragua. And yes, I do know there's a Honduran curly hair tarantula, and I do know there's another locality of Nicaragua, the Ometepe Island I believe is what it's called. But this video here is just me discussing about my experience breeding the species, the market, and pretty much curly hairs in general. This is just my opinion and my experiences, so to each their own, and uh, let us get straight into it. So currently in the tarantula market, the curly hair tarantula is pretty much the most common tarantula that's commonly sold, and there are two reasons why. Number one, there's a lot of wild caught. Pretty much if you bought an unsexed adult, then it's most likely a wild caught, and if they said it's captive bred, most likely they're lying, because there is way too many wild caught specimens of this species. Secondly, which is kind of contradictory to the first reasoning, there's too many captive bred specimens. Yeah, we've gone full circle. This species right now is currently in a strange place. It's in a place where there's too many wild caught, but at the same time there's too many captive bred specimens. Pretty much it's saturated on both ends, both wild caught and captive bred. Now I'm going to be honest, I actually like this species a lot. As a matter of fact, I have 12 adult females. And yes, for those who are wondering, those 12 females I have are captive bred because I produced them myself and I hatched them out of an egg sac and raised them up myself. Honestly, it was an honor watching them grow. But uh, let us get back onto topic. So the reason why I'm talking about curly hair tarantulas today is because people have been asking me over and over and over again. Are curly hair tarantulas beginner friendly for beginner breeders or new tarantula breeders? And my answer is yes they are. But at the same time, they're a double edged sword. So the reason why I categorize these guys as beginner friendly for a tarantula breeder or a new tarantula breeder that is, is because number one, they're very cheap. Like very cheap because there's a lot of wild caught imports. So constantly there are mature females, mature males, and gravid females coming in pretty much constantly. But if you want a captive bred specimen, it will cost a little more, but it's still very cheap to get going. So overall, to get this breeding project started for a new tarantula breeder is very affordable, honestly. Now, let us discuss about the double-edged sword. And this is pretty much after you've produced slings from an egg sac. And this is where the problem really starts with this species. As I stated earlier, this hobby and this market is saturated with curly hairs. I mean everywhere you go, pretty much every single person that sells tarantulas or reptiles in general that sells arachnids will have curly hairs as an option because of how many wild caught there are and how many captured bred specimens there are. Because like I stated, since there's a lot of new tarantula beginners that is into breeding coming into the zombie, a lot of them are producing curly hairs as well. But the problem is that they produce curly hairs on a massive scale. I've seen some beginner tarantula breeders produce like 12 sacks from 12 females. Let's do the math guys. So if one female had one egg sac and one egg sac has approximately 400 slings, let us multiply that by 12. And oh boy, that is a lot of babies. And you can kind of see the problem where this is going with the species. And now it's a problem of saturation. There's way too many in this hobby and there's not enough keepers. Unless somebody wants to keep a hundred babies or a hundred of the same species, then maybe, <laughs> then maybe there's hope. But overall though, it's very difficult because of how many there are, both captive bred and wild caught. The good news is that it's beginner friendly. So for both a keeper and a tarantula breeder. So honestly, if you're trying to sell this to somebody who's new to tarantula keeping, then this is pretty much the tarantula you want to advertise because it's pretty hardy does pretty well in captivity, and it's actually a pretty stunning tarantula and is great for everybody, both experienced keepers and beginner keepers, but it more so leans towards the beginner tarantula keepers, but the overarching problem still remains because there's too many being produced and there's not enough new keepers coming in. And let's be honest, how many of us wants to keep a hundred curly hair tarantulas? Not to me personally, or even if I did have no space for a hundred of them, I wouldn't. Because just like every other hobbyist, we want to have a diverse collection, right? So most of us will have maybe the most around three of the same specimens. 
Now I'm a breeder, so sometimes I have more than that, but you get the general gist. So while they are a great beginner tarantula breeding project, for me, I find these guys more adorable as a pet rather than a breeder. But hey, that's just my personal opinion. Take it what you will. If you want to breed these guys, by all means, feel free to do so. Because I actually like these guys a lot. I just wish that people were more responsible in terms of breeding them. Now, interestingly, it wasn't always like this. Before the curly hairs became, you know, oversaturated in this market, it used to be the rose hairs. Because back then, Chile actually used to export a lot of wild-caught rose hair tarantulas. So, Grandma Stella Porteri, Grandma Stella Rosea, a lot of those guys were wild-caught and pretty much was like the dirt cheap tarantulas in the market. But what ended up happening was that Chile actually closed their exports. So now the rose hairs were no longer coming in. And because of that, the prices of rose hair tarantulas shot up through the roof. Like they're super expensive now here in the United States. And what ended up happening was that people began exporting wild caught curly hairs as pretty much the replacement for the rose hair tarantulas. And now we're in this situation where the curly hairs and the pink toe tarantulas are pretty much oversaturated in this market. Now to me, the curly hairs are way more saturated than the pink toes, but they're both pretty much saturated. It's just that the curly hair is more saturated in my personal opinion. And my speculation or reasoning as to why that is, is because curly hair tarantulas, although they are hard caught along with the pink toes and both of them are coming in constantly, the curly hair tarantulas have higher sack numbers than the pink toe tarantulas by a lot, which is why I speculate so. But hey, that's just me though. If you like the species and you want to breed it, by all means, feel free to do so. I will not stop you. I'm just stating my experiences in this tarantula market, what I've seen and what I've experienced. And this is just my experience, so to each their own. You may be luckier than I am, and maybe you'll actually find all of these guys' homes if you actually produce this species. Now to me guys, I find these to be more of pets than actual tarantula breeding projects. And the reason why is because selling these is actually very difficult as already stated. And I will only breed the species if it's through a loan. I will not breed the species on my own because it will be such a difficult task. And typically when it comes to my loaning splits, when it comes to curly hairs, if I'm breeding curly hairs, typically I like to do 25-75. So I only want 25% of the sack numbers. Now this isn't me hating on the species. It's just me being realistic about how much I can take in and how much I can hold on to these for. Because I know that if I'm trying to sell these or if I'm trying to find these guys new homes or rehoming them in general, it will be a very difficult task because since everybody's producing them and a lot of people sell them, it's going to be very difficult to find these guys homes. So I like to take in a number that is realistic to me. Now I love these guys as pets. Like, come on, I had 12 females. I love them a lot. <coughs> But when it comes to the tarantula breeding projects for a beginner, this is one where I tell people it's a good beginner tarantula to breed, but at the same time, be realistic and be cautious because trying to sell these or trying to find these guys' homes is the difficult part, which a lot of people forget. Breeding tarantulas and producing babies is only half of the journey. The other half is finding all of them new homes, which that is the difficult part, and which is the most difficult part for me when it comes to the species. And that's what I typically tell every single new tarantula breeder who's new to tarantula breeding. And most of the time, they just go for it still, which is honestly a good thing because they're taking on that risk. It's really about if you're up to the task and if you're willing to take that chance. So if you can do it, then I think you'll be fine. Now, that's pretty much some of my experiences and some of my thoughts and opinions on the curly hair tarantula. And I can go on for days, honestly, talking about the curly hair tarantula. But I think I'll just wrap it up around here for this video. So I know that people have been asking me what are some other beginner friendly, you know, tarantula breeding projects to start from. And maybe I'll make more videos on those in the future, such as this one, for example, with the curly hairs. But uh, this is about it for now, I guess. Maybe I'll talk about the common pink toe tarantula next because that's another beginner friendly tarantula that's pretty much also saturated in this hobby, but not as much as the curly hair. So maybe that'll be for next time. But without further ado, everyone, I'm calling it here. So thanks for watching. Please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe and stay updated to whenever I upload here on the channel. I upload every single Friday. So please feel free to do so and stick around and also support me on Patreon and follow me on my social medias, such as my IG and my Twitter, specifically on IG, because that's where I post my pictures. And with that, stay lax and 
Laxo out from the Kumo Sensei.